Greetings! It is I, Titus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the forgotten collectible card games of old, where I go over each of these collectible card games that have sort of fallen by the wayside to a degree, fallen out of popularity, aren't produced anymore by their companies, various reasons that they aren't as well known anymore. I've been talking about the third collectible card game that ever came out, Collect Vampire the Eternal Struggle, based upon the Vampire the Masquerade role-playing game system set in the world of darkness. We've been going over the rules, and we're getting close to the end of the rules. It's been a long one, because these rules are easier, th are not as easy as the last ones we talked about with Spellfire. But, so, we're almost done the minion phase. We're going to finish it today. Let's talk about Diablery. So Diablery is effectively when one vampire drains all the blood of another vampire until they die. Until they are burned. Until they go to the ash heap. This makes that vampire causing, doing this, the Diablerist. And this is, of course, frowned upon greatly by vampire society. But... If you're doing it in game, there are a set number of rules, basically a set number of steps when you're committing Diablery. Because we talked about the action of committing it last episode, it's time to talk about what happens when you actually do this. When your vampire, when the vampire that's doing this becomes a Diablerist. So the first thing that happens is the Diablerist will take the, all the blood from the victim. Now, this doesn't mean any excess blood is kept on them. It's burned away just as like bef any time before when a vampire gains blood. If they get any excess, goes away. But the amount of blood, they would be filled up to the amount of blood on the victim to them. Next, they can take any equipment from that vampire. Any equipment that they want, they can take from it. Anything else? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. That's the next step. That vampire gets burned. Any equipment or cards on that vampire get burned. If the victim was older than the vampire that's becoming the Diablerist, the Diablerist, that vampire, the Diablerist, its controller may search their hand, library, or ash heap for a master discipline and give it to their vampire. Effectively, they've gained that ability. Afterwards, I may have to shuffle my library, or if I used one from my hand, I may draw up. Afterwards, if again, it was a higher higher generation, higher age. Then the Diablerist, its capacity goes up by one. This does not automatically fill the capacity. And this is after I've drained all the blood away from the victim. So I don't get any more of that blood that burned away. But I will have one open capacity on my newly increased abilities of my vampire. Now this counts as a single step. All of these actions that I just talked about... One single step. This means it cannot be interrupted. You cannot do anything in the middle of all these things happening. You could play a card before this occurs or after it occurs, but not during it. Once you start taking the blood off of that vampire that's being diablerized by the diablerist, it keeps going until you get down to possibly increasing a blood capacity. Until then, no interruptions. After this is done, a blood hunt might be called. So what is indeed a blood hunt? Well, as I said, Vampire Society, it condones Diablerists. It condones it in such a way that they have to be put to death. That is what a blood hunt is called for. A blood hunt is called in order to basically hunt down and put the Diablerist to death. Now, generally speaking, this is the law, but it's not always fair. If enough influence or enough reputation can be used, basically, by the Diablerist, they can get out of, get away with it. Basically, effectively, the Methuselah that's controlling Diablerist could attempt to influence those around them into preventing you not to vote for the Blood Hunt. Because that's what it is. A referendum that is called automatically. Now, this is not an action, so therefore this referendum cannot be blocked, and no action modifiers can be played on it nor can any reactions be played to it. The blood hunt is just a non-action referendum called automatically after Diablerist has completed their action. If the referendum basically calls for the blood hunt successfully, the Diablerist is burned and all anything cards attached to them are also burned. If you manage to somehow use your influence to avoid it, guess what? You've gotten away with it 
Your job list has gotten away with it. They've survived to maybe do it again another day. Let's talk about our influence phase, because Methuselah are constantly trying to vie control of and or influence younger members of vampire society, and traditionally, they attempt to resist this. Methuselah use a number of methods, either secret or open, in order to try to manipulate their younger kin, either the promises of power or trickery that they don't even know that they're being manipulated. Regardless, they're always trying to influence them into doing what they want. Your influence phase allows you to put some influence on your younger vampires within your uncontrolled zone in order to get them under your control, or to possibly put new vampires from your crypt into your un uncontrolled zone. Any kind of action that's done here during your influence phase, your influence phase actions are referred to as transfers. You get a set number of transfers during your influence phase, and just like your master phase actions, you cannot transfer these, you cannot hold on to these, you can only use them now during your influence phase, or you don't use them. You either do it or you lose it. Now standard, each Methuselah receives four transfers on their influence phase. But this doesn't always work out this way, especially at the start of the game, because the first Methuselah has an intrinsic advantage over every other one. Therefore, the first three turns of the game influence is less. Basically, whoever Methuselah takes the first turn gets one transfer, the Methuselah takes the second turn and gets two, the third turn, three, and then from every turn after that, the fourth turn on, they get the standard four transfers. So those first couple of turns is less transfers, basically allowing people acting later to not get kind of screwed over as much by the influence that's growing around them. Now, during your influence phase, you can spend your transfers to do a number of actions. First off, you can spend a you can spend transfers to basically put blood on a vampire in your uncontrolled region. For every transfer you're sent, you may move one blood counter from your pool to one of the uncontrolled vampires within your uncontrolled zone. For two transfer, you can move a blood that is on a uncontrolled vampire in your uncontrolled zone back to your pool. Or for four transfer and burning one blood counter from your blood pool, you may take the top card from your crypt deck, the top vampire, and put it into your uncontrolled zone. So it will cause you four transfer to get a new vampire and one blood pool and one of your pool that you're burning, but then you move the top card, always the top card from your crypt into your uncontrolled zone. You basically move a new vampire into uncontrolled. At the end of your influence phase, any vampire whose now amount of blood counters on it is equal to or greater than is at least equal to its capacity becomes controlled. So I have to put a number of counters on that vampire until I can control it. It becomes flipped upright, moves to my controlled zone. The blood counters I placed on it, basically with my transfers, become the blood capacity it has, which should again match its capacity this time. If for whatever reason it should have higher capacity than it normally would, any excess blood is burned off. Other types of crypt cards are handled similarly. Once you meet the required amount of blood on them, they are flipped, moved into controlled, activated. They are active, untapped, ready. So that's what it is. The vampire is untapped and ready when it moves in from your uncontrolled to your controlled. So that's it for today. I finished talking about, of course, the minion phase where I talked about Diablerie, the rules for becoming Diablerist and possibly dealing with a blood hunt. You might get a bunch of stuff by Diablerizing another vamp or having one of your minions Diablerize another vampire, which again, important notes here that I did not note earlier. One, if you're a blood cursed, you can't be a Diablerist. Only vampires can be a Diablerist. And I did forget a little thing here. If you Diablerize a red list vampire, you might get a trophy. I'll talk about that a little later, but those are three important details I did leave out a little earlier. Sorry. But other than that, it's all the same thing. You go through those steps of diablerizing them. And if you succeed, a blood hunt might be called. Now, if the blood hunt is indeed called, your vampire gets burned, the one that's the diablerist. But it's a referendum of whether or not a blood hunt occurs. You could influence other people to see if you can prevent them from doing it convince them not to vote for the blood hunt. Now then I talked all about the influence phase. 
where you try to influence other vampires. This is where you get vampires from your uncontrolled region into your controlled region. Of course, you're using your transfers. Four special transfer actions you only get now during your influence phase that you can move blood around, that you can move blood from yourself to one of your vampires. Move back from them if you decide, oh, I don't want that guy anymore. I tried to put blood on him earlier, but now I have someone better to put blood on. I want that back. Or you can use four of your transfers and burning one of your blood to get a new vampire into your uncontrolled region. A lot of choices there. And of course, as soon as you have enough blood on them, they move from uncontrolled to controlled with a new pool of blood on them. So, in the next episode, I will talk about the remaining phases, your discard phase, ending the game. And we're going to move into talking about some of the sex and details about the vampire society you're going to need to know about in order to do this game right. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's just for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon. Link description below. There's some great rewards there and it helps to grow and improve the channel. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.